Well, take a look at this. Another box just showed up from San Francisco, California. It's not really that far away from me, only about 200 miles. But let's go ahead and open it up and see what is inside. All right, well, the first thing I've got is a bunch of bubble wrap. This thing is packed pretty well. I do have a remote, a Marantz remote, a digital VHS. Marantz Dolby Digital PCM. Digital VHS, digital HD TV recorder, MV8300, D Theater, D VHS, S VHS, not to be confused with Super VHS, it's actually separated VHS, an I logo, and the VCR Plus, which I don't think even works any longer. Look at that. So I happen to know that this unit was manufactured by JVC, Japan Victor Corporation. So let's go ahead and get it up on the bench and see what it's going to do. All right, so here is a look at the back panel. Look at that, a digital audio optical output. Antenna in and out, probably NTSC only. It probably doesn't support HD like ATSC. S-Video in, two of those, as well as composite video and right-left audio. Component video out, S-Video output as well as two composite video outputs, as well as left-right audio. And then we have some proprietary jacks over here. Uh, JVC like this AV CompuLink that they used for years, and the JLIP connector. Uh, look at that nice big fan to cool it off. There's the model and serial number up there. Power cord goes in right there. So let's go ahead and flip it over. I'll pop the top off, take a quick visual inspection, and then we'll power this unit up and see what it does. All right, so here is a nice view of the inside of the unit. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, some of the ribbon cables have a little bit of yellowing going on in, on them. So maybe this guy who owned this previously was a smoker. I know that the customer that I currently have purchased this just recently. A lot of yellowing on this wheel right here. So I'm wondering, um, let's take a look at the power supply real quick. So the power supply module sits over here and let's just take a peek. Don't know if you can see that or not. Let me zoom in on it if I can. Top of that capacitor is bulge. Not good. Hopefully that's the only problem this unit has. The customer told me it powers up and powers down. It won't stay on. So I would suspect a high ESR capacitor as being the culprit here. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it actually does. All right, so I've got it plugged in. I've turned the power on. It says load on the front. So it does appear to load the tape. Let's hit play. Took a couple tries, but it finally went into play. I do have it connected to a video monitor where I get no response whatsoever. No video output at all. Stop button is not working whatsoever. Interesting. Well, I think I'll investigate that bulge capacitor over here in the power supply before I do anything else. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power supply. This one should just unplug and lift out of the board. We'll pop the covers off of it and take a look inside. Okay, so here is the power supply board. I've got it out of the unit. And we're going to go ahead and ESR all the capacitors in here as I normally do. And you can certainly see that that one right there has been leaking. It's even got some electrolyte corroded up on the outside of the case. It is a 1500 at 6.3 volts. So as I normally do, I went ahead and I marked all the capacitors. This time I circled the positive leads. Those are the ones that I'm going to be unsoldering off of all of these capacitors. And then we can ESR each capacitor individually, basically out of the circuit. The reason, if you haven't heard, I unsolder the positive leads is because a lot of these capacitors, if you look at this one, for instance, you'll see a coil right here and then another capacitor. That's a pi filter network where it has a capacitor to ground, a coil in the middle, and then a second capacitor to ground. So if you unsolder the negative leads, it's iffy if you can get everything unsoldered. I'd rather unsolder the positives, I always do, because even if one stays connected and only one gets disconnected, I'll still get an accurate reading at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip these off with the HECO FR301 real quick, and we'll do some ESR checks and see if they're all within reason or not. Okay, so let's do a quick ESR check. Zero my leads out, make sure I'm at zero, and I am. So this first capacitor will be the one that was bulge. So about 75, 80 ohms, bad. Uh, two ohms, have checked that value. Pretty close to zero, that's good. 
Yeah, about three ohms. We'll check that one as well. Find out what the value is. Oh, definitely bad regardless of value. That thing's like 12 ohms. Zero. 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 It's a small little cap. I get nothing on it. Absolutely open. Oh my goodness. Zero. Yeah, about five ohms. Mm, eight and a half. Probably bad with it regardless of value. Zero. Get a good connection. Zero. Good. So let's go ahead and check and see what values these are over here. So two ohms. That one's a 100 at 16. So that one should be pretty close to zero. I'll put a red dot on the top of it. And we know this one right here is going to be bad. So I'll mark that as red as well. So two and a half ohms on that one. That's another 100 at 10. Signify that as bad with a mark on it here. About 12 ohms. Another 100 at 16. Bad. Six ohm. Another 100 at 16. Bad. Open. Absolutely open. I don't care what the value is. It's bad. It's a 47 at 10. Uh, about eight ohms. That's an 18 at 50. Odd value, 18 microfarad. Eh, two and a half ohms, 27 at 35. Probably have to replace it with the 22 or 33. Let's mark that one as bad as well. We'll go ahead and replace it with the higher value cap, maybe a 22. All right, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bad capacitors here. This one's gonna be the tough one. 1500 at 6.3. I don't know if I have that. We may have to put a higher value cap in there. We may have to put a 2200 microfarad cap in there. The other ones, we can come up with something close. Even if it's a 27, I'll put a 33 in. If it's a 18, we'll put a 22 in. Always, if you're changing caps, go with the higher value versus the lower value to be safe. Well, I've got my capacitor kit right here, and I do have some 1500 microfarad capacitors at 10 volts. We'll go ahead and use one of those in place of the 1500 at 6.3. So let's go ahead and ESR the new capacitor real quick. Zero. Perfect. I like it. Let's go ahead and put it in. Okay, got a bunch of new caps in here right now. We should be ready to go. So I ended up changing eight different capacitors on here that were defective across this board. Okay, so this connector right here is where the power supply plugs into the main board. And I'm noticing some of the components right down in here have been very warm and there are associated capacitors with those. I see four small caps and one large cap right here. So I'm hoping I can pull the bottom, which you can see right here off of the unit and maybe get access to these at least four capacitors where I can check them and find out if they're good or not. So I'm going to flip this over, pull the shield off the bottom of it and see if we can get access. Well, no such luck. Here's the power supply connector right here, and here's where I want to be right here. But thank you, Japan Victor Corporation, JVC, for molding this big plastic runner right here where I can't get to it. Okay, so I got it all back together, changed all the caps, and I get the same exact results. So I thought I would go ahead and check the power supply. I've got a schematic right here. And so here is the capacitor that was bad, the 1500 at 6.3. And so if I follow that through L5403, and it comes down here to pin five and six, which is an always four volt source. Well, when I test that, I only get about one volt on that. So that's a problem. So I thought I'd go ahead and I'd look back a little bit farther. And what do I see? Right here in the middle of your screen, a circuit protector, CP5401. So let's look at that on the power supply. That's just a fuse. So I am in the continuity range right now. And here is CP5401. So let's do an ohm check. Open. So let's see if I can unsolder that. So here it is right here. I see some printing on the side of it. So there it is, SG2.5A. Well, I don't have a 2.5 amp, but I do have a two amp. So let's go ahead and put the two amp in there. I don't want to go over and let's see if it's going to work with the two amp. Because normally when they design a circuit like this, if it requires a two and a half amp fuse, that means it has about one and a quarter amps. They normally double what the rated current is. So the two amp should work just fine. Okay, well there it is, mounted in the circuit. Let's go ahead and plug it onto the circuit board and see if we get a better response. 
Well, it blew the fuse right away, as soon as I powered it up. So, um, I've got a schematic. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this chip, the MD1422N off the board. I did a preliminary check and I found that pins 11, 12, 13, and 14 are shorted with about 39 ohms to pins 18, 19, 20, and 21. So I'm gonna pull this chip off the board and check it out of the circuit and see if I still get a short. I've got my hot air blower. I'm gonna warm this up to about 750 degrees. I'm gonna focus on the chip body at first. And then I'll heat the pins up. And then once it becomes ready, I should be able to pick it off with a pair of tweezers. There it is. It was epoxy down to the board, which is why it took longer than normal. Okay, so it might be out of focus, but here is the chip. This is pin 1, 16, 17, and 32. So what I'm interested in is 18, 19, 20, and 21, which are all common. So if I do an ohm check, 18 to 21, I get zero. And I'm gonna check back to 11, 12, 13, and 14. 11. And I show 0 0.036, let's look at ohms. I get 42 ohms between the 18 to 21 pin set and the 11 to 14 pin set. And so from 11 to 14, what do I get on pin 16? Nothing. And I'll show you why I'm checking those pins because here's the pin out of the IC. And so I'm checking 40 ohms approximately from here to here across this FET. That's telling me that this FET is damaged, that that's no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and quote this to my customer at this point because it's gone over the pre-approved limit. So I'll go ahead and give my customer a call. If he wants this, I'll go ahead and order a chip, we'll replace it, and hopefully this will take care of the problem. Okay, so I have two brand new MD1422N ICs. One is still in the package, and the other one is going on the board right there. I have the pads prepped with flux. I'm just gonna go ahead and reflow some fresh solder over them so the pins will take correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up that spot right there with the hacko, because I want the chip to sit flush. There we go. Okay, next I'm just gonna go ahead and begin by heating up the chip uniformly and the pins. Now that it's soldered in place, we'll let it cool for a moment. Okay, so there it is, all soldered back in place. Let's take a look at the solder connections and make sure they all look good. And they all do, I don't see any defects in the soldering right there. Went ahead and cleaned up the flux with some acetone. Well, next we'll go ahead and put it back in the unit, power it up, and hope for the best. So I went ahead and replaced the fuse, CP5401. It is a two and a half amp circuit protector an ICP integrated circuit protector. Okay, so I have it loosely assembled. The power supply is back in it. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a power up. And I see load in the display right here. I'm gonna wait till that's done. And then I'll hit the power button right here and see if it powers up. Okay, auto, hit the power button. It's doing some kind of a self-check. Okay, it seems to be happy. Let's hit play and see if it plays the tape. It looks like it is playing. Stop. Can we rewind? It says rewind in the display. Stop. Fast forward. Stop. All right, let's get a monitor hooked up to it and see if we have any video. 
Let's go ahead and hit play. And I see video. And I hear audio. That is totally awesome. This customer is going to be so happy to get his Marantz digital VHS machine back. It is working absolutely perfectly. So all I need to do now is get it reassembled and make sure it still works once it's all put back together. So wish me luck. So I'm just wondering how many heads this thing has on the video drum. So there's one. That's a double azimuth, so two, three. That's a double azimuth, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a double azimuth head, nine, ten, and eleven heads all together on this thing. Can you believe that? Eleven heads on the video drum. Well, that's why it's a digital VHS machine. It needs that many heads to get enough data to decode a digital signal. I gave it a quick cleaning. I think I missed a little tiny spot over here, right there, but I think it's gonna be okay. The heads are nice and spotless. This thing actually has very, very low hours. So I'm just in the process of reassembling this unit right now. We'll get it all back together give it one final test. Okay, so it's all back together. Let's open the door. We'll put a tape in it. Loads the tape okay. Plays the tape okay. Let's go ahead and get the camera over on the video monitor right now. All right, so there it is. Let's hit play. And it's playing. That is totally awesome. The Marantz Digital VHS HDTV Recorder MV8300 is up and running again. Another one saved from the recycle bin. That's my late uncle's train set that he worked on for years and years. So once again, I want to give a sincere thank you to those who have contributed to my channel via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.